Welcome to TSAT. Today I am going to discuss about science and technology for group 1. I am going to give introduction to science and technology for group 1 and I am going to discuss about uh, the evolution of policy formulation for the technology development in our country. So, in this context as far as science and technology is considered, what for this uh, science and technology or how science and technology is helpful for the development of the country uh, is the main aspect here which we need to know. So, in this context, uh, the role of science and technology is uh, the main aim is of science and technology is socio-economic development. So, here what do you mean by socio-economic development? So, economic development as you know uh, is increasing in the income uh, whereas in the case of personal level economic uh, development is increasing the per capita income or increasing the GDP of the country at the national level. So, in this case, in the case of a development is considered when relatively compared with growth, growth is a quantitative factor where development is a qualitative factor. So, in this context technology helps in growth and development both. So, in this case of development is considered for example, during 1952 uh, the kind of uh, the different kinds of sectors existing in uh, uh, in uh, secondary sector or the tertiary sector or the primary sector are very less. So, by the time with the evolution of time, by the time we come to 2022, the different kinds of sectors in terms of uh, uh, manufacturing or tertiary sector has been diversified a lot. For example, in 1952 uh, or so, take the case of uh, medical facilities available, the kind of specialist doctors available are very less. Uh, an MBBS doctor or an MD is available, but right now uh, the kind of specializations existing uh, in terms of gastroenterology or neurology or cardiology or radiotherapy, radiology, you have got n different variant types of uh, specialization. So, diversifying in different ways uh, and providing different ways of services uh, leads to development. For example, we have got a different surgeon for the upper jaw known as maxillofacial surgeon. So, in every area in technology, in transportation, there is a huge development. So, uh, there is no much development in terms of uh, transportation. The only way the, the transportation is very, the development of transportation is very low during 1952 in terms of roadways or railways. Now, you have got a very broad different variant types of uh, transportation, uh, public and private, airways, uh, etc. have developed a lot. So, that is the basic difference between uh, growth and development. Uh, so, the main aim of science and technology is socio-economic uh, development. So, in this context of economic development as you know increase in the economic aspect of per capita income and other diversification of services, uh, but what do you mean by social development? So, social development is something related to society where a society is a group of people living together with certain relationships where society is made up of a combination of institutions. So, here in this context, what are the different kinds of institutions existing in the society? So, in the case of society, you have got different institutions like a family or a legislature, executive, judiciary, these are the different kinds of institutions which we have got. So, when these social institutions in terms of education or health or security aspects, when these different uh, uh, institutions in the society are providing different services, uh, helps in the improvement of the standard of people in terms of hygiene, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of um, life expectancy, when, when the society institutions are able to uh, provide a better conditions in social life in terms of hygiene, all these aspects come under social aspects, literacy rate. So, when the technology helps in the improvement of literacy rate with the help of communications and with improvement in terms of security, improvement in terms of healthcare, all these aspects come under social aspects. When the social and economic aspects combine together leads to a real development where technology plays a very major role in this process of uh, development. How come we, are, we will be discussing in the upcoming uh, episodes? So, science and technology helps in improvement of healthcare, physical infrastructure, safe drinking water and food supplies. So, 
this is the main aim of uh, science and technology for the purpose of uh, development. So, for this purpose of development, we have got an institutional structure in our country. So, what is the institutional structure as part of introduction we need to know responsible for the execution of science and technology. So, CSIR Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is the main institutional structure which is responsible for the development of science and technology in our country. So, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is established in 1942. Its aim is to provide a strong industry, social welfare, strong science and technology base for strategic sector. So, here uh, we have got uh, different sectors like primary, secondary and tertiary sectors. So, development can happen only when all the sectors um, develop equally. For example, in the in the different sectors of our country. So, in the case of uh, secondary sector, manufacturing sector is considered in our country, when we relatively compare, it is, uh, it is in a weaker condition. So, here in, in this condition, we need to strengthen the manufacturing sector especially to acquire stability in our country. So, science and technology helps in improving the manufacturing sector, uh, so that it will be able to provide a strong support to the economy. So, where we are weak, we need to be strengthened with the help of science and technology. So, social welfare which I have discussed with you and science and technology based for strategic sectors. So, what do you mean by a strategic sector here? Strategic sector is a sector with which our existence uh, is questioned. For example, you have got agriculture, you have got defense, we have got uh, uh, healthcare sector. So, there are certain sectors without which the survival itself will be questioned. Question. So, uh, these are considered as strategic sectors. This is the first prima facie, uh, the main aim of science and technology is to strengthen the strategic sectors. So, these uh, uh, science and technology is multidisciplinary and multi located. So, here in this case, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is a multidisciplinary institution. So, multidisciplinary here implies that uh, it requires different uh, knowledge of different uh, subjects. So, for example, uh, science and technology involves it consists of uh, space technology or agriculture or biotechnology, healthcare. These are different uh, branches of uh, science and technology. So, you require the knowledge of different branches of science that is what uh, multiple disciplines is uh, and these uh, branches are located in different parts of our country. So, uh, that is the nature of uh, this institution CSIR. CSIR aim is to ex exploration and exploitation of indigenous raw materials uh, and uh, natural resources for import substitution. So, what do you mean by this here? Uh, exploration, you must be able to identify, find the resource available. After finding that, you need to exploit that use for our requirement is one of the main aim of uh, CSIR, which is indigenous, which is present in our country for import substitution. So, import substitution is very much important. So, what do you mean by import substitution? You must be able to identify, explore the resource in your country so that you need not import, so that it does not strain much on your forex reserves. The foreign exchange reserves uh, deplete when you are importing more. What is the advantage of having more forex reserves is your economy will be more stable when you have got more forex reserves. So, when your technology is evolved better, you will be able to pro pro produce certain manufacturing goods which is competent enough in the international trade so that your exports increases. When your exports increases, what happens is your foreign exchange reserves uh, will be in a better positive condition. So, you will be having a, a stable economy. That is one of the main aim of uh, CSIR and science and technology. And the other aim of CSIR is pollution control, comma, waste utilization and uh, energy conservation. So, uh, for example, we are burning a lot of uh, fossil fuels for the generation of power and automobiles. So, when you are able to shift the technologies to Another resource like uh, battery powered vehicles uh, or generation of power with the help of solar power, etcetera, 
what happens is the amount of uh, greenhouse gases being released can be reduced, minimized. Uh, that is uh, how our technology is helpful in controlling the pollution. This is an example which I have given to you. There are many such applications to reduce the amount of pollution which we will be discussing in the upcoming discussions. Waste utilization and energy conservation. So, waste utilization is you with the kind of new modern technology, we can convert the waste into energy. For example, the agricultural waste or the waste from the markets, the vegetable markets can be collected and can be used to generate biogas or methane for the generation of uh, uh, heat or energy, etc., which can be utilized for different purposes and energy conservation. So, what is happening is with the improvement of technology, the energy consumed by the systems reduces. For example, when you relatively compare with the tungsten filament bulb and an LED bulb, with the change in the technology, what is happening is the power being consumed by LED bulbs, LED lights is less when relatively compared with tungsten bulbs, so that the power is being saved because of technology is an example of con example of a conservation of uh, power. So, CSIR involves in research and development in airspace, biotechnology, coal, food, minerals, metallurgy and healthcare. So, here in the case of airspace is considered, we use airspace for different purposes, for domestic transportation, for uh, launching missiles to defend yourself, for the flight of a fighter flights, for the communication, launching satellites. We use this uh, space for the application of different technologies in the areas which I have just specified with you. So, in this context, you need to know the technologies essential to fire a missile, to fly in a fighter flight or a domestic flight or to launch a satellite for communication purposes. The technologies are different. So, you need to develop technology to use the airspace for these different purposes. So, CSIR does research in these areas and we are going to apply technology in all these different areas for our advantage. The next is biotechnology. Biotechnology is the application of technology on life forms which are used in different purposes. For example, uh, biotechnology has been applied in plants, animals, plants in the case of uh, uh, development of different crops for agricultural purposes, animals in the case of uh, uh, animal husbandry. Even this technology has been applied in terms of medicine for the purpose of treatment uh, uh, for different diseases, development of vaccines. These are all the different applications of uh, science and technology in uh, biotechnology. Coal. So, uh, coal is, when coal is considered, coal is a very important aspect because coal almost all occupies 55 percentage of power is being generated with the help of coal. So, judicious utilization of coal is required. Conservation of coal. You need to have an efficient insulating systems to save the heat energy being generated so that the amount of coal being burnt can be reduced with the help of technology. So, the energy convertibility ratio in thermal power generation is very weak. So, this can be improved with the science and technology by improving better thermal efficient systems. The, and in terms of food, minerals and metallurgy, so we must be able to uh, meet the demand of food with the exploding population with the help of uh, biotechnology by improving different variants of crops with the help of uh, a recombinant DNA technology. New variants can be generated with technology or uh, development of minerals, metallurgy and uh, healthcare. So, these are all the different vari areas where CSIR works for the development of science and technology. So, the CSIR has got other branches like traditional knowledge digital library. So, whatever knowledge we have lost because of uh, improper uh, data storage capacity. So, what happened is we have got an uh, immense knowledge which we have acquired from our Vedas. A lot of knowledge has been lost because of uh, lacking in uh, storage uh, capacity. But with the development of this modern technology in terms of storing the information, the existing information need to be stored uh, 
in uh, electronic systems and computers computer in the form of data and when it is being stored it can be easily passed to the next generations there is another aim of uh, csir in terms of science and technology next is i say ar you have got indian council for agricultural research its aim is to improve the primary sector production through green revolution white revolution yellow revolution golden and horticultural revolution through the department of agricultural research and education so here what is happening here is one of the method to improve agricultural production is a, a green revolution so uh, and the modern biotechnology in organic farming these are all the different applications of uh, biotechnology in agricultural production so in the previous kind of green revolution we are able to success uh, successfully do the agriculture in only regions where there is intensive agriculture uh, intensive irrigation available in the regions of punjab or in the some coastal pockets but with the modern uh, uh, biotechnology you are able to cultivate even in regions in uh, uh, rain fed regions with the help of drought resistant varieties with the help of uh, bio technology in terms of uh, agriculture so there is improvement in terms of agriculture with the help of this indian council of agriculture research it has been executed in terms of white revolution yellow revolution golden revolution which is also known as horticultural revolution so white revolution is increasing in the production of milk yellow revolution is increasing the production of oil seeds golden and horticultural revolution is uh, increasing in the production of uh, vegetables flowers and fruits through these uh, organizations is one of the aim of uh, csir so these are different uh, revolutions which might be useful to you in objective bits for example gray revolution means which is something related to the uh, improvement in the production of fertilizers essential for uh, agricultural production silver revolution is something related to increasing in the production of eggs silver fiber revolution is something related to increasing the production of cotton brown revolution is increasing in the production of leather pink revolution is related to onions shrimp uh, prawns pharmaceuticals so onions are pink that is how they are been uh, related logically shrimp and prawns prawns are shrimp more or less one and the same in the case of uh, uh, shrimp is considered consists of prawns crabs lobsters crayfish together commonly classified as shrimp uh, and pharmaceutical starts with p that is the reason why the medicines etc that is the reason why onions are pink uh, shrimp uh, prawns starts with uh, p pharmaceutical starts with p so that is the reason why these are all included in uh, pink revolution black revolution is something related to petroleum products and coal so so this is a kind of technological methods need to be adopted to improve the production of these uh, uh, essential goods and services so the role of icr uh, develops uh, agriculture uh, agroforestry animal husbandry fisheries home science and allied science so icr indian council for agricultural research so here the main aim is to develop agriculture so in this context by developing different uh, crop variants hybrid variants with the help of uh, uh, genetically genetically engineering genetic gmos genetically modified organisms or species of plants can be developed for better production Um, and uh, agroforestry agroforestry is uh, a development of forest species in the transitional zones between the villages and the forest because uh, they have got certain uh, economic advantage so identifying certain species which have got economic advantage and making them to cultivate in the buffer zones for the economic development or economic advantage of the rural sections development of animal husbandry fisheries home science and allied science uh, is the main aim of indian council for agricultural research icr also publishes and transfers technology programs so whatever been innovated uh, need to be transferred to the society or the agriculture or to the farmer so for example we have got icrisat here uh, for icrisat mainly does a research on uh, crops which can thrive on semi arid tropical region semi arid means a semi desert so when a plant is not able to thrive in a desert or a semi desert region you are going to 
modify that with the help of genetic engineering and you are going to make a unique variant which is not available naturally and after making this uh, fabricating this variant which is not naturally available genetically with genetic engineering these need to be transferred to the farmer actually to be cultivated in the farm without which uh, it is waste so icar not only innovates or produces a new variant of crop it also transfers after a certain uh, successful cultivation it need to be transferred to the farmer is one of the aims of a uh, icar next we have got national bureau of plant genetic resources so in the case of uh, national bureau of uh, uh, plant genetic resources are considered this organization quarantines a wild variant species of plant so quarantine which we have come across this pandemic era where isolating is what quarantine is so in this context we are quarantining means isolating a wild variant of crop so when we isolate and uh, uh, when we isolate uh, this crop and cultivate uh, individually what happens is uh, Uh, you will be able to preserve the variant farmers do not cultivate the wild variants which are not economical but you need to quarantine and preserve them because you have got an advantage with the wild variants where where they have got a very good disease resistant capability that is uh, the reason which you need to store from which the modern hybrid variant or genetically modified variants can be made without the base natural available variant you cannot generate a hybrid variant or hybrid variant or uh, a genetically modified variant so uh, that is the reason why you have to save the wild variants even though you are even though they are not economical so that is been done by national bureau of plant genetic resources and the other advantage they have got is they are highly disease resistant that is the main advantage with wild variants so if we want in future to modify it or you want a genome for developing a new variant of crop if you don't quarantine and cultivate the wild variants we will not be able to get the base genome essential so that is the main aim of a national bureau of plant genetic resources next is indian council of medical research so this is an organization which is in use in this pandemic era because uh, this is in use because without the approval of icmr never a drug or a vaccine cannot be released into the market because there is a specific protocol need to be followed in the process of testing what happens is when the testing process meets the protocol essential then only a product a medicine or a vaccine can be released into the market which is been approved by indian council of medical research so these are all uh, under the different branches which are under the control of uh, cs ir for an efficient execution of the policy of uh, efficient efficient execution of the policy of uh, science and technology so this is the institutional structure we have got for the execution of uh, science and technology policy so that different technological branches throughout the country can be implemented so now i am going to discuss uh, about the policies which are been formulated evolution of policies you will be able to understand this only when you understand the evolution of policies since the beginning to the current condition then you will be able to understand better so the discussion which i am making with you will be able to understand the institutional structure of science and technology in our country and the policy formulation and the evolution of policy in terms of execution of science and technology in our country so this is a, a discussion which will not only helpful to you to understand the condition and institutional structure of science and technology in our uh, country this will also helpful for you to write an essay on science and technology so the content uh, for uh, the syllabus for uh, essay Uh, can be anything it can be social issues it can be polity economy history or geography in the same way the content of science and technology is also helpful to write an 
essay. So, the content which I am going to discuss in this episode uh, will also be helpful to you to write an essay because this is part of introduction and the institutional structure. So, the science and technology helps in uh, economic development, productivity, efficiency with sustainable economic uh, development. So, this is the main aim of the policy of science and technology. So, science and technology helps in economic development and productivity. Development what I have explained initially. So, what is meant by productivity? Product, productivity is a condition where you, we must utilize a minimum input and maximize the output. That is one of the main aim of technology. So, productivity means when you relatively compare the ratio between the input and output, the productivity is more means input ratio must be less when relatively compared with the output, then the productivity ratio is more and efficient. A technology helps in increasing the productivity by reducing the input cost is the aim of science and technology with sustainable economic development. So, as you know sustainable economic development is making the resource available to the future generations and maximizing the production with the minimum inputs and avoiding the pollution of the environment, keeping the, ha keeping the environment habitable not only to you to the upcoming generations is the main aim of science and technology. So, in the upcoming uh, discussion, I will be discussing with you the evolution of uh, science and technology policy in our country. Thank you.